I speak today on by what authority, by what right? What gives you the right? Who said you could do this? You have no right to come in here and disrupt what we have set up. Who do you think you are? Challenges to our authority, our right or privilege to act upon something, come with any action of change. Change to some is threatening. Any kind of change. Consider that the most stressful and stress-inducing periods, periods of any person's life are around positive periods of change, marriage and the birth of a child. The easiest changes, which others believe should be the most traumatic and stressful, are the death of either a child or a spouse. Divorce is 90% the most stressful and 100% more stressful than the death of the same spouse. Easily, because the living cause stress where the dead are simply gone. Change doesn't cause stress and angst because of any loss, real or implied, loss of income, status, free time, privilege, etc. But because any change signals a change in the power structure that the individual has enjoyed and that there must be an outside force or power other than them exerting power on their life. Not a happy thought. Even when the change will be positive for all, no one suffers a loss of any kind, but all come out the same or even better. Those in power will now fight the change to prevent the change in control, implied by allowing the change or improvements to come. In churches, temples, synagogues, etc., and in faith questions, this is even more true than changes in an individual's life. And in churches at all, there are power struggles occurring simultaneously on multiple levels, some advocating for the change, others holding back the tides of improvement against any alterations of any kind in their church, even items of no value or substance. In other words, they fight against a new brand of toilet paper in the public toilets, whether to say old versus men in Christmas carols as they were written from five centuries ago adding the word acceptance to love in the Lord's statement, be loving to all, will heal any ill, etc. Because even a small change will be a foot in the door to all other changes. Oddly, in the churches with power struggles, few ever include the religious in, on any team, counting them out as irrelevant. Only these control freaks don't listen to God's designated workers, though. The rest of the congregation, 98%, listen carefully to their counsel and follow. Thus the battle is won by the side which has the religious, whichever side chose to follow the precepts of the church. But it is a destructive internecine battle. The word internecine. Neither side truly wins, for the result is so bloody, so deadly to both sides if it's a familial war, or for an inner church war. Assets are destroyed. Secrets are revealed that should not ever be revealed, and no one attends to the needy, to the ministry, to the people. These internecine battles, these evil, very human activities, cause people's faith to be damaged and destroyed. 
I was in one, and that is why I left the Catholic Church. People's lives and reputations are destroyed, all because in the guise of acting as God's agent or as Christ's representative, the actions taken, the behavior committed, and the words spoken were never from our Lord God, Jesus Christ, but from some darker form, far lower, lower and far from the Lord Christ. It's ambition, human ambition, led by the Dark Lord himself. But the leaders of the church, both clergy and non-clerical, were the cause and the sustenance of this ego over purpose, and even give power and feed the people who will use the lies to achieve the need. No leader should put climbing the ladder ahead of the present to and for someone in need. These leaders, these false prophets, these claimants to Christ's mantle, fail to follow even one aspect of his teaching and live the antithesis of Christ's life, live richly on the donations of the poor, allowing their human ego needs to supersede the faith and spiritual needs of anyone else. And so they steal the fleece of the sheep. You, the flock, the sheep. You, the flocks and the followers of these false prophets, bear some culpability. You, in your anti-Christian zeal, to bypass living according to the teachings and commandments. Such a simple way to abide by all teaching and commandments. Show the love to your neighbor through service to and or for them each day in small ways, such as running an errand, weeding a garden bed, picking up groceries you know they can use. They need not know whence it came. Only you and God need to know. But that is the least you can do each day to fulfill the teachings and the commandments and loving all others. Instead, these others decide to believe the lies of the false prophets, who make no attempt to hide their hypocrisy, living in luxury, while giving nothing to any charity, ever. Then demanding donations from all followers, saying, the more you pay increases the likelihood that you will reach salvation. Repeatedly saying to all who ask that you can buy your way to heaven. Nothing but living according to Christ's words allows you into the kingdom of God. Not one thing. So the false prophets in every church, these false preachers, all they do is sell you a false promise. And you sheep who tried to buy your way to heaven. You sheep who tried to hold the church in the past. You know where you are going. All of you may turn away from this with one act that will curdle your very souls for the hatred that fills you. Vow to love every human for every day remaining to you regardless of race, religion, income, education, or cleanliness. Christ knows your inner thoughts. You can't fake him out. Love one another as I have loved you. In my love, you are perfect. There is nothing about you that need be changed. Love of God creates perfection. Love everyone except each person. Love each person without exception, as Christ did.